In January, the chief executive proposed a withdrawal from the Convention Against Torture to prevent refugees and asylum seekers from seeking protection in Hong Kong as he wanted to avoid any abuse of the immigration policy. Since then, the refugee problem has been a hot topic in Hong Kong. Indeed, who are these protection claimants? While most of us do not have to run away from our home because of fear for our life, there are some people who must flee from their countries to escape from wars or being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social group, or political opinion. When they are awaiting their refugee status to be recognized in the prospective country, they are called asylum seekers. Currently, there are over 10,000 asylum seekers in Hong Kong with over 10,000 cumulative torture claims. Some have stayed in Hong Kong pending their claims to be possessed for over 10 years. Mam Pasi is a Congolese asylum seeker. He came to Hong Kong in 2003 due to religious persecution. Once I go back to my place, my life is finished. Behind the affluent city's facade, this marginalized group receives little assistance and is living in a plight. The government gives a refugee 1500 for the rent a month. Can you find me a room for 1500 in Hong Kong? Hong Kong has been signatory body of, of the Convention Against Torture since 1992. The Basic Law and ICCPR also embody the principle of non refoulement In 2014, a new screening mechanism called the USM came in, into operation. However, almost no applicant could successfully pass the screening process, while the global rate is around 40%. I got many rejections when UN had rejected. I was not permitted to stay in Hong Kong. The system is fake, not is refugee who is fake. With little assistance and no permission to work, some asylum seekers commit crimes to earn a living. The refugee is making a crime. Is the government problem? You pushing me to do a crime? Since 2009 till, uh, till 2015, late 2015, uh, there's been 11,000 cases of these asylum seekers coming to Hong Kong. Out of this 11,000 people, they're, they're associated with 3,800 crimes. That is a, a crime rate of almost 40%. And obviously, the long-term solution will be to withdraw from the treaty. They set up a Facebook page called No More Refugees with over 8,000 followers where they share news about alleged fake refugees. And we have read stories about uh, tourists being murdered and tourists being raped. So we post on our uh, Facebook page to raise awareness and to recruit more people who are concerned about uh, this issue. Actually, media in Hong Kong often depicts refugees and asylum seekers as criminals, illegal immigrants or fake. Some of the media are just for the propaganda. Most of the media who came want to interview us, they are anti-refugees. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights provides that every human shall have the right to asylum. The refugee crisis is highly related to the protection of the essential human dignity and the fundamental human rights of these minorities in Hong Kong. The civil society definitely have a role to play in driving systemic change, eliminating discrimination and meeting the acute protection needs of these claimants. Last month, the Amnesty International organized a movie screening in HKU to raise the general's public awareness on this issue. They share information about refugees in Hong Kong and try to articulate solutions to urge reforms on the relevant laws and policies. Some questions definitely worth our reflection. While the Canadian government can generally hear refugees' claims within 60 days of the application, is it satisfactory for Hong Kong to take years to do it? Is withdrawing from international conventions necessary or is it just chopping off our toes to avoid sandworms? When there is a faster and efficient screening mechanism, will the fast claimants still risk coming to Hong Kong? 
The Hong Kong government undoubtedly has the responsibility to fulfilling its human rights obligation and address the crisis in a humane and responsible way. At the end of the day, we are living in a relatively peaceful city, but we definitely have a moral right to protect the unlucky one. We are not criminal, we are human beings.